Megan Wall. I'm a grade three teacher at Wellesley. And I'm Catherine Sesson Jones. I'm a grade one teacher at Rockaway Public School. Spheros are robotic balls, and there's three variables that you can control the, the distance or the, and uh, the direction, and also the color. The LED lights, so it's basically any color that you like. Now, we wanted to see how many people in here have ever worked with this bureau, just so that we could get a show of hands. So that's what was going to lead us to the next. We know that we have a time constraint right now, and we, we really feel that even if you don't have the background knowledge with Spiro, it would be good to get you up and playing with this bureau. So we're going to give you a quick little basics of Spiro. Um. It takes about three hours to charge them, and to turn them on, it's a tap, so a firm finger tap or a tap on the desk. They're quite robust. They're also waterproof. And um, each sparrow will flash its own three colors. So this is yellow, yellow, red. If I pop out of the slideshow and head on over to my settings and go to Bluetooth, And the thing, the thing about working with Spiros is there's a bit of setup before you actually bring them into your classroom. So if you're planning on doing an activity with them and you think you can get them ready in five minutes, don't do that because they just might not show up right there. And right now, the Bluetooth is trying to connect to all the different devices that are in here. So typically, it's struggling. So I touch yellow, yellow, red. I know it's connected when it changes to a continuous white light. On all the school iPads, we have a, a program called Tickle, which is a block coding program. And Catherine will explain that in a moment. I'll just um, try to connect this guy. And we talked about this with the other groups as well. If you're planning on using your Spiros in your class, don't think that you can go to nutrition break and come back and just whip them out and they'll be ready to go. Um, there's a lot of little tweaks and you gotta make sure you're prepared with them and have them ready. Because even when you do have them ready, like for example, there'll be a time that you'll have to probably even fit them. <coughs> And I find that even now they were working fine, and then we did have glitches. And I tend to, uh, my the first thing with, with problem solving is just shutting everything down, forgetting the device, and restarting again. It does happen, but so some problem solving sometimes has to take place. You want to talk about the rear light? Oh yeah. So to control this guy, I'm just disconnected again, Catherine. But um, there is a tail light. And I'll press it in a moment as it connects. And um, let's see if we can do this again. So it's really testing us. Perfect okay. problem solving. Yes, it's problem solving. Exactly what we were talking about. So while we're doing that, I'll just talk a little bit to these little blocks that you can see yep. sort of faded in the background. Um, I'm new to coding, totally new. I have no experience whatsoever. When somebody asked me to do uh, TLLP with them on bringing coding into your classroom, I thought, um, Okay, and now that I'm doing it, it actually is quite fun, and the kids help me. So uh, some of it is quite intuitive. There's blocks that you will see when you go into Tickle, and they were just moved right here. Um, you can see all of these are the titles of the different blocks, and up here, this is one of the most important, it's motion. So you'll be able to figure out, they have a list of all these different movements you can do with your Spiro. You, if you want to move for one second at 50%, you bring that over and then you start to connect all the blocks, and that makes your code. Once you start playing today, it will be like, oh, okay, I get it. So we really wanna not spend too much time talking. We want you to actually go and play for a bit because I think that's when you'll start to see how valuable these tools are in your classroom. All right. Um, do we wanna show those? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Um, we wanted to give you a few lesson ideas of how we've used the Sphero in hopefully rich ways that connect to the curriculum. So uh, Halloween, October 31st afternoon, uh, we, I got the spheros out in my classroom. I, I am in a grade three class, so we need to know about 90 degree angles, less than, more than 90 degrees, or equal to. So we created the WRDSB using a uh, light painting, uh, another app that I admit I did buy. 
Um, so it was, we got this done in about an hour, and it was rich because the students start not with the with the Sphero and with coding, but actually unplugged, we call it, where they're standing there in a team and working out which way they would have to move to create W. So move forward, turn 90 degrees, left or right, move forward again. And uh, they, they plot that out and talk that out, and when they've got a plan, then they get the iPad and then they get the Tickle app to actually pull that block code out and test, test their hypothesis. Um, so that, as Catherine's, uh, uh, Catherine uh, actually mentioned in the last two, is that very quickly you see the learning skills, you see the collaboration, you see the communication, and um, which teams you need to help more than others. But it was about an hour, and, and uh, it was beautiful. And then what we did is we tried to do it all at the same time. And that's our WRDSV on the floor there. Um, art connections, language connections, math connections. I think it was a worthwhile afternoon, especially on October 31st. Yeah. <laughs> and the kids loved it. You know, that was the perfect afternoon with our costumes on. Okay, engagement is huge. So one of the things I thought, well, how am I going to use a Spiro in my class? We started with unplugged coding um, early on in the year, looking at triples. Are you all familiar with the Tribes program? There's this triples, and then little fuzzy balls, and they tell you how you feel. So we started totally away from coding. And then we led up to doing unplugged coding, where they had to move their triple on grid paper from home to school. And then I thought, oh my goodness, this all links, because the spiral is a circular thing that looks like a triple. I'm going to bring it out for art. How can I link it to art? And so then I looked at our art curriculum expectations, and you've got lines, straight lines, wavy lines, jagged lines. You can see our art here. There's tons of lines in there. And then I was looking at geometric <coughs> shapes, which led to connecting it to math with 2D shapes. And we talked about um, what simple shapes do you know? Just off the top of your head. And the kids were like, um, circle. Square, triangle, and then I was like, yes, that's perfect. We're going to start to do some art with that. And we're going to mix some primary colors, and I wonder what's going to happen with that. And then that led to looking at Jackson Pollock and looking at artists that are out there who've done something similar to their art piece. And um, the conversation was phenomenal. At one point, one kid said, we talked about Jackson Pollock after I pulled out their art piece after they used this bureau, and I said, what's this art piece look like? And they were like, it's like ours. And I was like, yeah, it's a famous artist named Jackson Pollock. And then another kid put up his hand and was like, is he as famous as Pablo Picasso? And I was just like, well, yeah, I would think, but maybe some people might not. And so it led into this whole other conversation. And that was just by using the Sphero um, and getting them to maneuver. And there's tons of math in there as well I could talk about, but we really want you to yeah, start Yeah, let's playing. get started. So we won't talk anymore about curriculum links. Also, how you can get them. Uh, ordering them, although the kits are very popular, but it's worth trying. Um, These yes. are some of the apps. That slow shutter is the one that I use for the light painting. Uh, draw and drive is free. It's really cool because the kids, it, it would work very well in kindergarten because you basically draw a shape on the screen, press play, and the Sphero will do that, that shape or that <coughs> design in that color. Um, Lightning Lab's excellent. It's got the preset shapes. And that's what we're going to be using over there. So Scott McKenzie's doing in-service if you're interested. And Here we go. Turn. So um, what's going to happen now in just a minute, you're going to get a chance to come over to any one of the activities in the room and start playing with the Spiros. This is the uh, amazing maze challenge. Uh, you're, you have to write a code and try to knock down the people that have already been knocked down, but we'll set those back up. Over here is an awesome, really, really linked to math. You need to code the Spiro so that it can run one meter, and then if you want to challenge yourself, get it to come back again. So you need it to only move a meter. Um, and then back here is the Jackson Pollock inspired art that you can do. And I'm going to try one of the things that happens with Spiros if they are used for quite a while. Um, for about an hour, which we're running with them right now, they start to slow down. So what we noticed with this one just earlier is that when it's moving through the paint, it's a little sluggish. Um, but these are our activities. We'd love you to go around, and we'll be in here answering oh, questions. Can I just mention one oh, thing? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, they've got, they're, they're like Matt, an old married couple. They remember each other, and they want to be together. Um, so even if this iPad is turned off, this Sphero has a connection to this iPad. Um, so we've labelled them so it's very easy. This is 2-2. Two, two. 
um, find the partner and I would recommend in school, I've had absolute chaos because all these iPads are connecting to all these different spheros. That's my big tip, that uh, grab the masking tape and, and keep the partnership together. It's really yeah. Quite, it's quite beautiful. Yes, <laughs> that's a beautiful one. Come right. and play, come and play. So walking around you can hear a lot of great discussions. Did anyone try to think about how they can see this in their classroom, working in their classroom, or some extracurricular connections? Let's talk more style this if we could. Anybody? Anybody? Someone? Yes. Mapping on the razor. Oh, forces and movement? Yes. Yeah, um, um, one of the teachers actually put elastic bands and they recorded the changes in distance. There's also these nubby covers and things like that, but my students noticed a big difference even from carpet to the tile. And uh, you could definitely document that and have a look at that, what, what um, covers cause more friction. I actually have a question. In your slideshow where it showed the letters that the kids made, how did you record that? Yeah, um, I did buy an app for that one, and I'll show you which app it is. It cost about two dollars, between two and three dollars, and I did use a tripod to um, because the shutter was open for about twelve seconds or so as the shapes formed. But um, I thought it was worthwhile because I see so many media links with that, with the light painting, not only art links, but also documenting your shapes and your movement of the sphero. And then again for the media, like I see the power of a symbol or a sign as well. Yeah. Are they waterproof? Yes, so that's what I was talking to the group in the back. They got, I'm going to have to take this one and clean it up before the next group. Um, but they, uh, I, put that in the paint and then I went to the back sink and I put it right underneath yeah. the faucet to wash it off. So yeah. even in the water table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, even in the water like table. There's yeah. actually, I'll, I'll get it up. There's a picture that Megan has with the kindergarten kids playing with it in the water table. Yeah. How much do these things cost? That was a, that's a question we got over there and I um, don't know right now. I know we have a friend that just bought a bunch of them for us. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the number I said, yeah. so I wasn't lying. Actually, Catherine, that's yeah. a good point. We just, every school, this is kind of really amazing, um, every school is getting two Spiros. So we oh, got our kit it? the other day, um, and in the kit, it's it's pretty good because it has, you know, the typical the instructions, it tells you what it's all about, instructions. It has, if you're going to travel, it has all the different adapters for when you're traveling. Um, there's just other tools like ramps, and it has two spheros. So every school should be getting them, like right now. It's addressed to the principal. It is addressed, so go ask your principal. Anything else? So there are any other connections or any questions? Because I think that's what we got time for right now. Yeah. That's it. Well, thank you for coming.